we already saw n choose k and its definition right it is n factorial by k factorial to n minus k factorial in one way or we said that k element subsets of an n element set now the claim is that there is some kind of symmetry with the uh, uh, what is called the binomial coefficient right n choose k is precisely equal to n choose n minus k for every k k can be 0 1 up to n so for each of these values n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k now can you prove this okay so there is uh, you know the standard proof you can use the algebraic proof very easy right how do you do that n choose k is n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial right this is n choose k what is n choose n minus k n choose n minus k is well again n factorial by uh, n minus k factorial right whatever is you know n choose that number that factorial and n minus that number right n minus n minus k factorial what is n minus n minus k it's again k so it is k factorial so this is n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial these two are equal it's the same thing so therefore n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k so that is a very easy proof but we don't want that right we don't want anything easy but the reason we don't want this is that this tells us nothing nothing new that we don't know so far right it doesn't explain why they must be the same right? it it tells you know from the algebraic requirement it must be the same by the definition but intuitively why this happens it doesn't tell us right so therefore we look at combinatorial proofs so in combinatorics you know we look at combinatorial proofs because that in many times will give you other intuitions okay of why things must be the way it is so for that uh, we try to look at combinatorial proofs so when i when i ask questions sometimes i will say that give a combinatorial proof right you might have a direct algebraic proof but we don't want that we will look at some other argument combinatorial arguments why the set that we are talking about here that we are going to count and the set that we are going to look at there which we are also going to count must all have the same number of elements right they are talking about two distinct sets maybe but they must have the same number of elements and what is the reason this is what we want to explain by using combinatorial argument and that also tells us why they must have the same number of elements right so here is a combinatorial argument for the same question. So why n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k? Well, <clears throat> what is n choose k? By definition, n choose k, right? n choose k is the number of k element subsets, right? Number of k element subsets of uh, an n element set. When I write n set, it is an n element set. Now, given a set, let us say, uh, let us say that uh, given a set, let us say uh, A, B, C. Okay. A, B, C. Suppose I want to form a subset, right? I want to form a subset A. So one thing I can do to form a subset is by taking this and then selecting the element A, right? Choosing the element A and form the subset A. <coughs> On the other hand, I can form the subset, uh, you know, A by, you know, choosing the other elements of the set let's say b and c and removing that from the set right so if i want to choose a k element subset i can decide which k elements i want to choose or i can say that okay i don't select these k elements i select the n minus k elements i don't want 
how many ways I can choose? N choose N minus K ways and throw them out, right? So I choose the N minus K elements I want and then throw them out. That will give me a K element set, right? And for any K element set, I can do this, right? I can choose an N minus K element sets which I don't want. Throw away those guys, then I get a K element set. So choosing the N minus K element subset is precisely choosing the k element subset also, right? It's complement. So therefore, n choose k must be equal to n choose n minus k, right? n minus k. Because choosing an, uh, a subset is equal to choosing its complement. And that is the reason why they must be the same. Here we are precisely doing that. <clears throat> now, here is another claim, right? N choose R, okay? R is some integer less than N, positive integer less than N. N choose R is equal to N minus 1 choose R minus 1 plus N minus 1 choose R. Okay? So, N choose R is equal to N minus 1 choose R minus 1 plus N minus 1 choose R. As we said, we can always find a, an algebraic proof here, right? Again, you know, try to write out, write down this, write down these two things, right? Then cancel out the terms and then put them together nicely. You should be able to reduce it to n choose r. But again, you know, that does not tell us anything new. But now let us look at a combinatorial proof for the same thing. So why n choose r must be equal to n minus 1 choose r minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose r? Again, if you can find out your own argument for this, you should do that first. So stop this thing for some time. Try to find out a combinatorial proof. Why uh, this quantity n choose r, which counts the r element subsets of a an n element set, must be equal to the r minus one element subsets of an n minus 1 element set plus r element subsets of some n minus 1 element set. Okay, why this must be equal. Okay, so here is our combinatorial proof. I choose the uh, I choose the n element set that no that I have right so I have this big n element set and then out of which I look at some particular element of the set, let us say x. Okay. So x is a uh, some element of the set that we are looking at n. Now on the left hand side what we see is that we are looking at r element subsets of the n element set, right? So on the left hand side, you have n choose r is r element subsets of, of an n element set, right? Now, <clears throat> when I look at the r element subsets, I look at the subset and see whether this subset contains the element x or not. Okay. So the, the special element that I, you know, I just marked it down, right, that uh, element x, I look at the given r element subset contains the element x or not. Now, some of the uh, subsets might all contain the element x, right. So this is x. So all the subsets that we are going to look at, right, in this basket, are all the elements, uh, all the subsets, are element subsets which contain the element x. Then of course, uh, there could be several subsets, are element subsets which does not contain x. Okay. So these are the guys which does not contain x. 
no x inside right my n and x sometimes look the same so uh maybe i just raise it mm, and then write it as let's say x is not in this set right <clears throat> so so this is uh, x is belonging to the set so here we have the r element subsets where x is not a member and here we have the r element subsets where x is a member now what i do is that i remove x from this set okay i remove x from this set then what do i get i get r minus 1 element subsets right but all these r minus 1 element subsets are the subsets of the set that we started with without the element x right which is an n minus 1 element set so therefore there is precisely n minus 1 choose r minus 1 such subsets right because i take the x away from the set i get an n minus 1 element set I form the R minus one element subsets. Any of them I take, I add X, I get an, because X is not there, I can add X. So I get add X and I get an uh, R element subset of the original set that we started with, right? So these guys are all going to be precisely N minus one choose R minus one. On the other hand, here we are looking at R element subsets, but these subsets are all without the element x right so x is not there so therefore they are also all, all the r element subsets of the uh, set without the element x right the started starting set minus x so again it has only n minus one elements so all the r, set r element subsets without x are going to be present in n minus one choose r ways so therefore this is precisely the number of ways uh, we can produce these but they basically exhaustively count all the r element subsets of the set that we started with right that, that is how we arrived at these two baskets right so therefore they must be the same so this uh, uh, shows why n choose r must be equal to n minus 1 choose r minus 1 plus n minus 1 choose r okay <coughs> Now here is a claim n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus n choose 2 plus etc plus n choose n is equal to 2 raised to n right so think about this and try to find your own proof there, there are many ways to find uh, proof okay so think about this uh, question try to come up with your own proof how many proofs you can come up with you let me know Okay, so n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus n choose 2 plus etc. n choose n is equal to 2 raised to n. So here are two, uh, two proofs I am going to give. First proof is by using binomial theorem that we just studied. Okay. So we have the binomial theorem, which is x plus y whole raised to n. Summation k is equal to 0 to n, n choose k, x raised to k, y raised to n minus k. So how do you prove this uh, equality using binomial theorem? Well, I just substitute x equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. So if x and y are equal to 1, then on the left hand side, I, I get 1 plus 1 whole raised to n, which is 2 raised to n, right, which is the right hand side here. Or what is on the right hand side? Well, x has become 1, right, so therefore 1 raised to k is 1. y has become 1, so 1 y raised to n minus k is also 1. So therefore, these two becomes 1, right. So I get k is equal to 0 to n, n choose k, which is n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus etc. n choose n. So therefore, this proves the identity. Okay. <clears throat> now, what is the proof 2? Proof 2, well, n choose k is the number of k element subsets of an n element set, right? So that is what it counts, right? n choose k counts the number of k subsets of an n set. 
now what is uh, on the left hand side of the identity right so it has n to 0 which count the zero element subsets of and an element set which is the empty set right namely it's going to be one always and uh, n choose one which is the one element subsets the two element subsets etc the n element subset right so we are going to count the subsets of an n element set looking at its cardinality right so by looking at the cardinality if it is zero or one or two or etc up to n there are only this n plus one possibilities so we look at account uh, then separately looking at the cardinality i get n to zero plus etc n to n but what are the number of subsets of an n element set well that is two ratio n because how do we form a subset right of a set right you have one two three etc up to n elements right how do you form a subset well to form a subset no i just decide for each element whether it is going to be there in the subset or not right so i will say that okay this uh, this guy right element one is going to be there or not so it is yes or no right element two again yes or no right two choices element three two choices element n two choices yes or no right so for each of the n guys i have exactly two choices to form a subset whether to put it in the subset or not throw it out right so because of this i have 2 into 2 into 2 into n just 2 raised to n choices so that also counts the number of subsets this counts them all together this one counts by them by separately by the cardinality so both must be the same therefore the identity is clear okay? so think of other proofs of this <clears throat> now i want to introduce uh, you to something that many of you may have seen so this is uh, pingala's meru prastara okay so pingala's meru prastara is uh, uh, known to be uh, discovered by pingala who was a very famous uh, uh, <coughs> what is it called like you know person who studied uh, the meters and you know basically language expert uh, from ancient India in Sanskrit, he has written some book called Chanda Sutra. Okay, so it basically talks about the meters, right? Poetry, right? So regarding the poetry, so there are many vrtas and things like that. So vrtas are basically the meters, and uh, he wrote a. Uh, uh, it's called Chandas uh, in Sanskrit. So it's called Chanda Sutra, basically. So. So, so there uh, you know a lot of mathematics right you know to basically to find out how many possible meters are there you know uh, of a particular uh, length right you know, what are the things that you allow so all these things you can count there is a lot of mathematics there uh, in this uh, chanda sutra okay it, it, this is uh, known to be somewhere in the uh, bc 600 or uh, earlier uh, just uh, maybe after Panini or something. Uh, so his uh, lifetime uh, is around that time. So many, many thousands of years before. So he has described what is called Meru Prastara. So the, you know, space Meru means it's, it's a name of a mountain in that, uh, you know, in the olden days. Uh, so a particular mountain, a very famous mountain. And uh, so the so there is a you know like mountain like structure so that is the reason it's called uh, meru prastara okay. so basically you put zero choose zero right, which is one uh, as the uh, the top then you put one choose zero and one choose one right then two choose zero two choose one two choose two etc for each uh, integer you put this so this continues basically okay. so this is the mountain that he is talking about right it has a nice structure so these numbers you can you can put and then you can see this is going to be 1 1 1 1 2 1 1 3 3 1 1 4 6 4 1 etc which are the binomial coefficients basically right that as we saw earlier which is appearing right the kth binomial coefficient appears at the k plus 1th line 
and we have this nice uh, uh, triangular way which is uh, <laughs> called Meyer Pulsara or uh, you know later uh, uh, Blaise Pascal discovered this called uh, Pascal's triangle also maybe that is the way you have heard but you know the name should be Meyer Pulsara because more than 2000 years before Pascal you know this was discovered so <clears throat> even before I don't know maybe people have discovered but what we know the earliest discovery by Pingala so it is a uh, Meyer Prasthara and uh, this uh, you know triangular formation has very very uh, uh, nice properties here you can find okay so some of these properties uh, you should uh, you should try to figure out yourself so so look, play with this okay look at you know try to make this triangle look at what all possible properties you can come up with whatever you find yourself uh, also let me know right you can just send me you know, some of this nice property that you find and uh, uh, write it down and uh, send to me i will i will see maybe we can you know look at this uh, properties and try to come up with some uh, <clears throat> some uh, uh, more questions regarding this okay so this is the homework uh, i want to give you right you know, just play with meru prasara or uh, Pascal's triangle try to figure out uh, many of its interesting properties so let me give you one one property just to no, just uh, as a uh, <clears throat> as an example right so let let me take you know this kind of a diagonal right it, i start from the top i go one two three four let's say whatever five whichever how many times i want i can go now i just add up these elements okay add up this one plus two plus three plus four plus five i will get 15. that is precisely the element that is going to appear here for anything right i have one plus three right this one is going to be four right or one plus five plus fifteen is going to be twenty one right? so this way i can i can find out that you know, no matter how much i go i can uh, see that this property is true right so similar uh many properties are there like you know you can draw in many different diagonals many different uh, things uh, properties you can observe like this. so try to come up with such nice properties we will give an example based on this property i i showed you uh, in fact to prove this property using the uh, <coughs> binomial coefficients okay so maybe you can try to formulate this property on your own so i will i will not write the exercise now you think about this and by the next class uh, try to come up with a, a, a a formulation and maybe a proof okay so we will uh, stop for uh, uh, today and continue the next class